Hey, what's up? This is Ben with Wad Prep, and in this video, I'm gonna help you get your first ever kipping ring muscle up. So we have a lot of videos here on YouTube about helping you learn your first muscle up. One of our most popular videos is a video where I teach two brothers how to get their first strict ring muscle ups in about 10 minutes each, less than 10 minutes each. This video, we're specifically talking about the opposite of strict. We're talking about kipping. There's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to kipping ring muscle ups. And this video, I'm gonna teach you step-by-step -step how to get your first and hopefully several more after that. But before going any further, make sure that you click the link in the description description below or in the top comment. We have tons of free training that will help you level up your CrossFit performance. If you are a master's athlete, we actually have a special coaching community that I would love to invite you to. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video, but if you're interested, just click the link in the description and in the comments below, and you can go get lots of great content. So let's start with the most important piece of learning these kipping ring muscle ups, and that is the prerequisites. A few things that are really important to know. You should not be trying to do ring muscle ups before you can knock out a few important prereqs. There are three main ones that I want to talk about when it comes to kipping ring muscle ups, and that is number one, you need to have about five or six or more, ideally, strict pull ups. So if you can't string together multiple strict pull ups, normally I'm looking for five or six or more. If you can't do that, then frankly, we need to be working on that pulling strength before trying to worry about kipping ring muscle ups. Another thing that I want you to, to have in your tank, this is prereq number two, and that is multiple chest to bar pull ups. So kipping chest to bar pull ups. If you can demonstrate the fact that you can do kipping pull ups and actually get your chest all the way to the bar, if you can do a few of those in a row, then chances are you might have the coordination and also that pulling strength to help you get kipping ring muscle ups. The last and final thing that I'm looking for is you must have strict ring dip strength. So let me show you a quick demonstration. I've seen this happen so many times where someone will get their first ring muscle up. So let's say we get the first muscle up, or we get above the rings, and then we get here, and we can't do anything. Uh, they'll sit here and they'll kip, they'll swing, they'll push, they'll do a whole bunch of stuff, and it won't include locking out the dip. So my last and final prereq is you must have at least a few strict ring dips. And when I say strict ring dips, I mean strict deep ring dips. So there's a big difference between being able to just go to 90 degrees and back up. A lot of times when you catch your first ring muscle up, you're gonna catch it really, really low in the dip. So you have to be strong enough to lock it out from that deep ring dip position. So we've talked about the prerequisites. If you can check all of those boxes, or maybe you're even stronger than the prereqs that I recommended, it's now time to move on to the rings. So let me show you the setup that I have. This is the setup that I suggest for learning the first kipping ring muscle up, okay? So what I have here is I have a box and I actually have a J hook that's gonna help elevate me to the rings. What I don't wanna see you do for your first ring muscle up is just jump up to the rings and try to get a false grip and just sit here and swing around and then try to start kipping. The issue there is you don't have momentum. You're starting from a completely dead stop. So the first step is I need you to set up a box and maybe some sort of J-hook. If this was farther away from the rig, I would have two boxes set up, but for here, we just have a J-hook. So from this position, the first thing I want to teach you is the small kip, kipping ring muscle up. So a lot of people, when they do their first, or they do their first few attempts, they do these huge, massive swings to try to get their first muscle up. What I want you to do here, actually, it's like a hybrid between a strict ring muscle up and a kipping ring muscle up. So the first step that we need to talk about is getting a proper false grip. So here I have the rings. What I'm going to do to get my proper false grip is I'm going to put my wrist all the way onto the rings. And then from here, I'm wrapping my thumb around. So you can see how high my wrist is. My wrist is actually above the bottom of the rings. A lot of people will try their first ring muscle ups like this with what I call like a standard grip. That's okay, it's just a little bit harder. I have the best success as a coach when I can actually get people to practice with a false grip. So that's why I call this kind of like, this is like a semi kipping or a small kip ring muscle up, okay? So once you have this false grip, again, the wrist is all the way on top of the rings. I wrap my thumb and, and everything over. My grip is at the base of the rings. I'm not choking up like this. I'm grabbing it right here, okay? So from this position, I'm gonna do this on both sides. From this position, all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop into a hollow body position. So a hollow body position is where my feet, my core is tight and my feet come out in front of me. So here's what I want you to watch and, and like make sure you're in full view here. Um, so when I drop in, all I'm going to do is put my feet forward, allow myself to get one kip, and then I'm gonna use that momentum to get over the rings. Okay, so here we are. I have my false grip, I'm dug in. 
my feet are coming out in front. You can notice how like I'm actually bending my legs to allow myself to get this extension because remember the muscle up starts at extension. So I'm bending my knees, I get full extension, and then I let my feet come forward, back, up, and kip into the ring muscle up. Okay, so let's watch that one more time. I'll come down and reset and show you one more. So again, what I'm trying to set up here is I'm trying to generate a lot of momentum, but also not lose control. So it's a very controlled kip. It's just one swing. It's very small, but that little bit of extra momentum helps me get above the rings. So let's watch it one more time. Feet on the box, feet on the other box or the J hook. I get my false grip. Ideally, if I was watching someone do this for the first time, I would have them chalk their wrist, their hands. There'd be chalk everywhere. There'd be chalk on the rings. I want to eliminate any slippage. So deep false grip, lots of chalk. I dig in that false grip. I lower myself down just almost all the way down to the bottom. Feet forward, back and up. And there is the muscle. Up. So all I'm doing is I'm dropping my feet into the hollow body position, allowing the feet to swing back. And then when they swing forward again, that's what lifts me up and over the rings. So a huge issue that people run into when they're trying to do their first ring muscle up, especially with this false grip, is as soon as they start kipping, their hands slide off the rings. They'll go from the false grip and then immediately slip down to where they no longer have the ring nestled in the crease of the wrist. So all I tell people to do, two quick tips, is number one, you wanna chalk up. So literally I will tell them to chalk up their palm and their wrist. So I'm not chalking the top of my palm here, I'm literally chalking the bottom of my palm where the ring is, and then the actual crease of my wrist. When I do this, especially combined with a good set of wooden rings, it really helps lock you in place. If you still find yourself slipping out of the false grip, another thing that you can do with your gym's permission is to actually tape the rings. If you wrap tape around the rings, combined with a little bit of chalk on your skin, you'll be locked into the false grip. Now, really careful, you probably will rip if you do a lot of kipping muscle ups with tape and chalk on the rings. However, if you're trying to get that first one, it is a surefire way to lock in that false grip once and for all. Just again, a little bit of athletic tape wrapped around the base of the rings, get your false grip and your hands will not slide. Okay, so we just talked about the small kip. Again, that's just getting set up on the boxes, letting our feet drop off the boxes into a very small controlled kip. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same exact movement and I'm gonna bump it up a notch into what I call a big kip. So I'm gonna hop back on the boxes again. If your false grip feels good, then you can keep it if you want, or you can just try to get the highest grip possible. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna allow myself to get a bigger kip. So earlier, I just told you to drop in like this with a very small swing. Now we're actually going to allow you, yourself to, to really drop into the rep, to get a ton of momentum. So for me personally, I don't like holding the false grip here. I'm just gonna grab the rings like this with my knuckles on top. And then from here, I'm going to jump into that hollow body position and get a really big kip. You'll notice if you have a good kip, if your kipping pull-ups are very coordinated, this is going to help generate a lot of momentum for you. So I'm here, jump forward with my feet, drop into the rep and I have a ton of momentum. So the idea here is when I jump in off the boxes, when I jump into that first rep, I have so much momentum for my feet swinging back behind me into that extended position and then coming back through into the hollow. It really helps get you a lot of upward momentum. As long as you're not death swinging back and forth and you can say balance underneath the rings, you will feel a ton of momentum and it'll help float you above the rings. So those are two techniques that you can use the box to do what I call that, that box drop in muscle up. We have the small kip, we have the big kip. The next level up, if you don't want to rely on boxes or any sort of J hooks to get yourself up into a position on the rings, then what we can do is we can jump into your first rep. So I'm gonna move these boxes away. I'm gonna take this box, I'm gonna move it out of the way, take the J hook off just so I don't hit it. And now what I'm gonna do is what I call the hollow hop in. So I'm literally going to jump into the hollow body position and then allow myself still to generate tons of momentum. So rather than jumping up to the rings and then starting from a dead swing and you know, like kicking my feet around and, and swaying back and forth a lot, I'm going to actively jump into the hollow and then swing into that first rep. So it looks something like this. I'm slightly behind the rings. I jump up, hollow, drop. And now I have lots of momentum to 
get up to the top of the muscle up. So just that quick jump into the hollow body position gives me a lot of swing and a lot of momentum to actually get my head and shoulders above the rings. All right, so let me show you that one more time and then I'm gonna add one more layer to it. So again, the hollow hop in, I'm here, the rings are above me, I'm slightly behind the rings, I jump into a hollow position and then watch how big my kip is. I jump up, hollow, swing. All right, so that's just a way to generate a lot of momentum with lot, without a lot of extra swinging. Now, some people really find that they need to get conditioned to the swing. They need to get a few swings under their belt before they feel ready to actually make that transition. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. This is a drill that I call swing, swing, go, or bounce, bounce, go. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna do two big kips, and then on the third big kip, I'm gonna go for my muscle up. So the first kip is gonna be big. The second kip, I'm going to try to make it even bigger. And then the third kip, I'm actually going to transition. So here's what it looks like. I'm still gonna do that hollow hop in because I think during any kipping movement, we should hop into the hollow body position. So I'm gonna do a hollow hop in. One, two, and three. So that was swing, swing, go. And I'm gonna demonstrate it one more time. So it's just a big kip a bigger kip where I can almost get the rings to that belly button. And then the third kip, I'm actually transitioning. And I'm gonna use a couple cues that we're gonna talk about in one second. So one more, swing, swing, go. Swing. Swing. And go. So that is a way to generate a really big kip to try to get that first kipping ring muscle up. Now I have two final cues that I wanna tell you about. And these have been absolutely transformational to help people get their first reps. Sorry to interrupt this message, but I have a special announcement from my dog. Murphy would like to tell you that you need to hit the subscribe button down there. Thank you. Reps. Number one is the ceiling to floor cue. So this works whether you're doing a strict ring muscle up, whether you're doing the small kip, or whether you're doing a big kip like we just talked about. While I'm doing the swinging in the first part of my muscle up, I want you to have your eyes fixated on the ceiling. So for instance, I'm here on these rings, there's a couple cross beams on the ceiling. I'm gonna pick out a spot on the ceiling that's about a 45 degree angle that way, and I'm gonna look at that during the portion, during the hollow and extended portion of the first kip. Then, when I actually go to do the transition, once I've elevated my body to where the rings are approaching my belly button, then and only then am I gonna take my eyes off the ceiling and I'm gonna look at the floor. So that's why the cue is called ceiling to floor. So actually, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a chalk bucket or a phone or a J hook, or I'll even take a piece of chalk and mark an X on the ground, like X marks the spot. But for now, I'll just take this chalk bucket and I'm gonna put it a decent ways out in front of the rings. And now I know that when I do my muscle up, obviously this is far enough away where I'm not gonna kick it. But as I'm doing the muscle up, I'm gonna be looking up at the ceiling and then when it comes time for me to transition, I'm gonna take my eyes off the ceiling and I'm gonna look for the floor. I'm gonna look for this bucket that's on the floor, okay? So I'll try to walk you through it as I'm actually doing the rep. So right now, my eyes are already fixated on the cross beam up there. Ceiling, ceiling, floor. And let's do one more. So the whole time I'm doing that kip, and this time I'll do a couple kips just to show you that my eyes are up, my eyes are up, my eyes are up, and then at the very end, once the rings approach my body, then I look at the floor. So, as you're watching this, hopefully we can do some slow motion. What I want to, sh to show you is that if I'm just standing here, okay, I'm just standing here like a normal human being, and I tell you, look at the floor. When I look at the floor, if I'm actually like looking at the floor, looking at my toes, what happens is it naturally puts me into this dip position. So just by simply manipulating where my eyes are looking, where my head is looking, where my, my chin is, it causes my body to tilt forward and it actually makes a really good transition. So let's watch it one more time. Looking up at the ceiling, I'll do a few kips. So ceiling, still looking at the ceiling, still looking at the ceiling, floor. And that's it, if you can just train yourself to keep your eyes up, keep your eyes up, keep your eyes up, and then at the very last minute, boom, look at the floor, that is really going to help with your transition. And then the last cue that I wanna give for this video is 
there are some times where people, when they're doing their kipping ring muscle ups, they have problems finishing the transition. Okay, so let me demonstrate what that might look like. This is the person who, when they try to transition, they tend to stay behind the rings and they can't quite settle into the dip. So it'll look something like this. All right, I'll do one more. Right, so their feet are staying in front of them, but they can never seem to get their head and shoulders through and over the rings. The cue that I want to talk about here, if the ceiling to floor cue isn't working for you, next, I want you to imagine that there's a sheet of glass. So imagine coming off this beam, there's a sheet of glass directly in front of the rig, directly in front of the rings. There's this big pane of glass. When we're going for the muscle up, you need to think about breaking the glass with your head. So here's what it looks like. Again, I'll show you the failed version where that sheet of glass is holding me back. I just don't want to commit. My head's not going through that window. Now, this is me thinking about ceiling to floor, and then I'm also thinking about breaking the glass with my forehead. Just that violent drive of my head through that invisible glass will help you flip up and over the rings and finally get your ring muscle up transition. So I hope that you like this video. If any of these tips help you get your first kipping ring muscle up, do me a favor and in the comments below, let me know exactly which tip helped you out and let us know how you got your first ring muscle up. Give as many details as possible because it's gonna help everyone else who's watching this video and trying to get their first muscle up like you. If you feel stuck, if you feel like you can't break through that plateau of finally getting above the rings, then make sure you click the link in the first comment below or the link in the description. We have lots of great training material at wadprep.com that will help you level up your training, including a free muscle up training guide that I'm offering for free for you to download. So go grab that now. Last but not least, thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if you didn't. If you haven't yet, be sure to smash the subscribe button because we have lots more ring muscle up training videos and a whole lot more on the way here on this Wad Prep YouTube channel. If you hit the notification bell and hit the subscribe button, you won't miss a single video. And last but not least, in the comments below, after you've gotten done describing your muscle up struggles or maybe your muscle up successes having watched this video, the last thing I want you to tell us is what are the prereqs? We talked about in the beginning of the video, you need to be able to do five or six strict pull-ups. You need to be able to do a few kipping chest to bar. And last but not least, if you remember, you need to be able to do a few strict ring dips. Let us know, one, two, and three, how many strict pull-ups can you do? How many unbro unbroken, how many unbroken kipping chest to bar pull-ups can you do? And last but not least, how many unbroken strict ring dips can you do? Leave all three of those numbers in the comments below and that's gonna help everyone else gauge where you're at. And if you can do your muscle up, then people who are at your same numbers will be able to tell, oh my gosh, if she can do a muscle up and she can do this many pull ups and dips, then I can do a muscle up. It's gonna really help inspire people. So I'll see you in the comments and I'll see you in our next video.